It's possible to take all those things we learned about graphing and shading inequalities and apply them to some real life situation. So let's do that in this example. Gina is considering investing no more than $3,000 total into a pharmaceutical company and a communications company stock. She intends to invest at least three times as much money in the pharmaceutical stock as she puts into the communication stock. Write a system of inequalities and solve. So if we're looking at this problem, um, it's always a good idea to start by writing a let statement that represents the two variables you're talking about here. Uh, so in this case, the two variables that I'm looking at it says Gina is considering investing no more than $3,000 total into a pharmaceutical company and a communications company stock. So let's let X equal the amount of money invested in the pharmaceutical stock, I'm just going to abbreviate here, and let's let Y equal the money invested in a communication stock. Now in this case you could have the X and the Y backwards and your graph would just kind of look a little bit uh, flipped on its side compared to what mine would be. Um, and that, that's not really that important as long as you kind of get the same general shaded area uh, depending on what your X and Y are you should be okay. So um, let's see where we're at here. So let's try to write some equations from this. And actually I start by writing equations and then decide which way the inequality sign is going to go. I think that's a lot easier. So I'm going to start here. It says Gina is considering investing no more than $3,000 total. When we were talking about systems of equations, we said that whenever we have a total, it's a good idea to write one of these types of equations where the total is on the right side of the equal sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something has to equal 3,000. Okay, and I'll think about this here for a second. So something's got to equal 3,000. It's got to be, you know, that's the total amount of money. So I need to think about the money from one stock plus the money from the other should equal 3,000. And, and since X and Y already deal with money, all I need to do is say that the money from the one stock plus the money from the other stock should equal the total of 3,000. Now I'm going to flip this sign and decide which way this is going. It says the amount, and this would be the Gina side over here, the, the variable side is the side she wants to invest. She wants to invest no more than 3000 which means that the amount she wants to invest has to be less than or equal to $3,000, and that should get us the first inequality. So I'm going to hold off here. I'm not going to graph it yet. I'll graph them uh, one at a time here. All right, so the next one says she intends to invest at least three times as much money in pharmaceutical stock as she puts into communication stock. Now this is a comparison of two variables. I don't see a total in here like I did with the 3,000. When that happened we said we're just going to take whichever variable and I'm just going to write this down here. I don't know if it's X or Y. Whichever one we have more of and find out what we need to do to the other variable to make it equal the one that we have isolated. So again I'm going to look here. She intends to invest at least three times as much money in pharmaceutical stock. That means she wants more pharmaceutical stock. That's X. So I'm going to take the bigger one, which is X, and isolate it. I'm going to put X equals. So she wants to put three times as much money in pharmaceutical stock as she puts into communication stock. So what I'm going to do, since communication stock's Y, I'm going to sneak a Y over here. What do I need to do to the smaller one to make it equal the bigger one? Well, if you take the smaller number, and we, since it's three times as much, and we triple it, that should give us the bigger number. A lot of people do that backwards. This is actually the way it should go. It should be x is equal to 3y, and now I just need to decide which way my sign's going. Since she needs to invest at least three times as much, that means that the amount of the pharmaceutical needs to be greater than or equal to three times the amount invested in the communication stock. Now we're all set up to go, okay? So we can graph this a number of ways. Um, this would actually be very well set up to graph using X and Y intercepts. Uh, remember that if you plug in a zero for the X, you could find the Y, and if you uh, plug in a zero for the Y, you can find the X intercept. You could also put it in slope intercept form. I think for this one, though, I'm going to choose X and Y intercepts. 
Okay? So if I plug in a zero for the x, that's just all going to become zero, and I'll just have y, and I, I'm, when I'm looking for the intercepts, I'll just switch that to an equal sign, because I'm just looking for a point. But if I plug in a zero here, let's kind of sneak this over here, this would be zero x plus zero equals 3,000. So you can see that the x-intercept would be at 3,000. So I'm just going to put 3,000 in for the x-intercept, and I'll write that as an ordered pair, too. The y-intercept is going to be exactly the same. If I plug in a 0 for the x now, so if I make this 0 plus y equals 3,000, you can see that, again, that would give me a y-intercept at uh, 3,000. So I'll fill in 0, comma, 3,000. Could you use slope intercept form and get by the y by itself? Sure, absolutely. It'll give you the exact same answer that I'm going to have here in a little bit. Um, now, this one is probably best written in slope intercept form, so I'm going to isolate the y here. I'm actually going to first flip everything around because I'm used to seeing the y on the left side. So I'm going to write this as 3y is the alligator should still eat the x. And now I'm going to put it in slope intercept by dividing by 3 on both sides. That should give me y is less than or equal to, if I sneak a 1 here, 1 third x. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up my graph here. Now, I know that this graph's got to be pretty big because I've got x and y intercepts at 3,000. So maybe what I'll do, and I'll, I'll start labeling my axis, the x-axis here is the money in pharmaceutical stocks. And I'm running out of room here to write on the other side, but the um, y variable is going to be the money invested in communications stock. Okay, so that tells me kind of what these two things represent. Now, since I've got to go up by like three thousands, maybe what I'll do is I'll go up by one, two, three. Yeah, let's let's go up, maybe make this one thousand. We'll make this two thousand. And I'll make this three thousand. And then going up this side, I'll make this 1,000. I'll make this, oops, I'm off by one there. Let me fix that real quick. So this should be, I'm sorry, this should be up three. Otherwise, I'm not going to keep a consistent scale, which is okay, but it'll make our life easier with slope in a second to do it this way. So this will be, I'm running out of room, 2,000. And this will be... Sneak this over here, 3,000. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 on the other graph. Now, if I've got x and y intercepts at 3,000, what I need is one dot here and one dot here for the first graph. And what I'm going to do is just connect my dots. Now, I do know also that this is going to give me a rise over run of negative 1, so I'm going to try and keep this nice and organized. Notice that we're also only graphing in the first quadrant because it's not possible to invest, you know, if we were down here, a negative amount of money in a company. So most of these word problems will only deal with the first quadrant. Okay, now for the shading here on this red line, we should be shading since it's less than or equal to. Uh, if we were to isolate the y, it would be a less than or equal to. Or we could plug in the point zero, 00. You would see that that would give you a true statement, which means we're going to have to shade the lower half of the line. I'll get to in a second. Now, finally here for my, blue, uh, for my green line, if I graph this, since the scale is the same on both, I can actually just kind of start at zero and go up one and over three. Had I chosen a different scale on the graph, I would not have been allowed to do that, but that should get me, uh, get me going good there. Now, all I have to do is shade below this line, because again, it's Y is isolated, it's less than or equal to, and you'll find that your final shaded area is going to be down in this little portion of the graph, okay? So that little smaller portion of the graph. Let me sneak this in so it's a little easier to see. Okay, so uh, that means any ordered pair inside this shaded area should work. Um, so that would give you an answer to the problem. You know, if I tried this ordered pair, that would work in both inequalities. That would be a possible solution. What we'll look at in later problems is what is the best solution to this problem, but we'll save that for another day.